So let's talk a little bit about the investor pyramid. And what I'd like for our members to think about is for those who own their own companies is to separate the two roles of company ownership. One is the role of CEO, and that's an operational role, and I want you to set that aside for a minute. Mm -hmm. And really think about that second role of owner. And think about yourself as being an investor in your own company and how the investor pyramid then applies to you. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the layers of the investment pyramid. I'd love to start by just actually quoting uh, one of the most famous American investors, Warren Buffett. He once said, dumb investors focus on the glass of milk, smart investors focus on the cow. And what he meant by that was that um, at the bottom of the pyramid, investors who are only focused on survival are extremely focused on the transaction. How much milk are you going to provide to me as quickly as possible? And think of milk as money, moolah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> milk is money. And when you are an investor and you're only focused on return on investment, and that's all it's about, you'll have sharp elbows. You won't really care what you're doing with this cow, the cow being the entrepreneur of the company. You're just trying to get squeeze as much money out of that A very short-term view. Exactly. And you know, that's most investors. So let's just, I'm not, I'm not trying to be uh, you know, Pollyanna here. The reality is most investors, and, and especially in public market companies, uh, the stock market company, you know, that's, that's how people look at things. What Warren Buffett was saying was smart investors go beyond the glass of milk. They realize that the source of the glass of milk is the cow, and building a great relationship with the cow is where you create successful investors. Because the cow produces, happier cows produce more milk. And so that's what in essence he's saying. And, and maybe better milk even. And so investors who are at that level um, are able to realize that it's not purely about the transaction. And you know, if we were all transactional in life, it'd be like being on a New York subway. When you're on a New York subway, you're probably not as friendly as you are as when you're at the water cooler in the office. Because on the subway, the people you're surrounded by, if you hit a couple people accidentally with your elbows when it's really crowded, you're not going to see them again. When that happens you know, in the, at the water cooler, you know that that person's going to be there for a while. Mm -hmm. So an investor who has that perspective has a longer term perspective on the relationship. And that's where that success level, and that's where, frankly, confidence is usually built between an investor and a company. The top of the pyramid for this investor pyramid uh, really comes down to the idea of a self-actualized investor. Now, that sounds like an oxymoron. And when I was first working on this pyramid, this third of the three pyramids, I was a little challenged. This one took the longest for me to get to because in some ways it's very easy to fall into the trap of thinking investors are just robots. They aren't humans and Maslow's hierarchy of needs has nothing to do with them. But that's actually not true. There's a lot of evidence including how people buy you know, stocks where there's a lot of emotions attached to how people make decisions financially uh, as investors. But most importantly at the top of the pyramid is we do know that there are investors out there who have pride of ownership and have that sense of legacy in, in terms of how they invest. And whether they're what they call SRI investors, socially responsible investors, or whether they're the angel investor who invests in somebody that they want to mentor who's 20 years younger than, than them. Or there's a, you know, parents who invest in their son or daughter's company. Or in our case, members who want to have their companies transition to family members. Absolutely. Or that just want to say, and I hear this a lot, I want this company to be something that I leave behind that lasts longer than I do, that, that continues to provide value for the world. I started my company 22 and a half years ago. Uh, I am a legacy investor in my company. I'm also a CEO of the company, so I wear those two hats. I don't want my company to go away. I, I like the create joy of our company. I like the legacy. I like the stories that really define who we are. And so as I look at my legacy moving on and, and being less involved actively in the company and maybe having investors come into the company and things like that, I look at it and from that perspective that I want to make sure that, that the pride of ownership around it is able to live on in a legacy kind of way.